Let's begin with what certainly appears to be the spread of Omicron across this country. British Columbia and Alberta both reported their first cases of the new variant. Let's talk about this in terms of what your concerns are and how widely this may have spread across Canada. Yeah, I think the first thing to recognize is that I'm not aware of spread yet and that we haven't yet have had people who have been identified with this variant who don't have an epi epidemiologic link to travel, to travel from countries where we think it may have originated. So I think that will come. But right now we're still identifying this in travelers. Uh, we're seeing it in many, many different countries. And, and we've stepped up our game with looking for it. And when you look for things like this, you start finding them. Um, and that's exactly what happened with South Africa. Whether it emerged there or not is unclear, but they looked for it and they found it. And now that we know to look for it, we are finding it as well. So the places where it has been identified or the countries where it has had been identified to have come from, as we know, are now on this, this list of, of 10 countries uh, not allowed to travel to this country. What's your take on travel bans and their effectiveness? Yeah, I think, you know, the first... Part of that is, is somewhat problematic because we're saying that the places it came from, uh, whereas we really don't know wh where the, those locations are, where it truly came from. All we know is where it's being found. And sort of the reverse of that is Hong Kong has just banned travel from Canada because guess what? We've announced a handful of cases too. So did it did it originate here? Um, and that's, that's the, the challenge with these travel bans is that, you know, part of it is does it work? And the other part of it is, is, it, is it fair? The does it work part is, is debatable. We know from studies that very early on in the pandemic, some of the travel bans outside of Wuhan bought some time. They bought China a few days. They bought the world probably a few months or at least several weeks before it spread. Eventually, it always spreads because the travel bans are leaky, but they can buy us time. But that depends on doing it early enough and identifying the right place in terms of the origin. Both of those are already problematic now. Uh, and then the other side of it is that it's, is it, is it a fair thing to do? South Africa did exactly what we've all called for countries to do from the beginning of the pandemic, which is to be transparent, to share information. They found something, they shared it with the world. And now in, in many ways they're being penalized, their economy, their people are being penalized, a movement, not only of people, but movement of goods. Uh, and I think just long term thinking, John, we, you know, if we, if this is the precedent, if a country, a group of scientists in a lab uh, announces a new variant, and the response of the world is to, is to shut down travel and to penalize that country, uh, are we shooting ourselves in the foot? The next time, the next variant, will that country be as forthcoming? And if they're not, what is the, the price that we're going to pay as a world uh, if we don't have that information? So all of those things need to be considered. You've identified a number of question marks that are sort of floating around uh, Omicron uh, that we're all desperately searching for answers for. Meanwhile, though, the fight against uh, the various other iterations of, of COVID-19 continue, especially getting kids vaccinated now. Can you talk a bit about uh, uh, concerns you might have about making sure that those efforts continue while people are still wondering what the implications of Omicron might be and presumably the implications for the vaccines that are already out there and being administered? Yeah, this is really important not to take our eye off the ball, not to get distracted by this in terms of the things we know work. Uh, we are, it is going to take time, John. It'll take a week or two for us to really understand the, the, the questions that we need the answers to. Does it spread more easily? Is it more virulent? Does it make people more sick than, than prior variants? And most importantly, how, how do our vaccines perform against it? Uh, so in the next couple of weeks until we have that information, we go with what we know, which is right now we have Delta and we have very effective tools against Delta. One of those, of course, is vaccination. We're in the middle of the early part of the campaign, really, uh, for kids 5 to 11. And there's no reason to, right now, think that that vaccine will not protect, certainly against Delta. Obviously, we know it protects against Delta. But even if Omicron were to become the dominant strain, as far as we know, um, there's no reason to think that the vaccine won't offer protection. Now, how much protection? Uh, it's this is These are the questions that we have. These are the tests that need to happen. Is it less protection than Delta? But most people in the field do believe that there will be a significant degree of protection and hopefully against severe disease in particular. Uh, but right now we need to stay the course because we know what we're dealing with right now and that's Delta. And it's not only vaccination. Even if we have Omicron, it's still a virus. It's still masking, distancing, ventilation. We still have all of those tools are at our disposal and, and that's also a reason not to panic. Uh, you say a reason not to panic. Do you sense there is a fear that there might be, if not panic, certainly a greater concern, maybe even a greater skepticism on behalf of the public at a time where there needs to be a confidence in pushing ahead with some of the measures you're talking about? 
Yeah, I mean, this is this is a scary time. You know, uh, we saw what happened with the Delta variant, uh, what it did in India, and then as it spread to other parts of the world. Um, so it's scary to think that there could be a variant that is even worse than that. Uh, we don't know that, but that's you know that's what you're hearing in some of the news reports, and and so this is very scary for people to hear, both because they're worried about getting sick, they're worried about their loved ones, um, but also because people are worried about going backwards, going back two years and starting over with lockdowns and, and all the impacts of that. So I think there's a lot of worry out there. Uh, right now, it's it's out of our control. All we can do is wait for the information to emerge and hope that it's it's favorable, hope that it's not as bad as, as some of the doomsday scenarios that are out there. And I think there's a good chance that it won't be as bad as, as what it's being portrayed at as, but until then, uh, continue, you know, keep calm and carry on. We have good measures and, and keep taking those measures. As you say, until then, uh, but people are making plans to travel, to maybe even travel to other countries, certainly traveling uh, within the borders as the holidays are upon us, Hanukkah underway, and of course then Christmas, New Year's, etc., and so many other holidays that bring people together. Is this a time where Canadians should be traveling or potentially revisiting their traveling holiday plans? Yeah, really challenging because there was there was a lull and things looked better and people bun, uh, booked their trips. And, and if you think about travel outside of Canada, I think it becomes very tricky right now because the situation is so fluid, John. We're seeing um, different countries added to travel ban lists, including Canada now for some countries. And then, of course, uh, the challenge is on returning. You know, which which country are you going to? Will that country be treated differently in terms of travel restrictions by the time you return? Um, changes in terms of our own policies. Now everybody needs a test on arrival vaccinated or not. I think what should happen, and, and maybe it will, uh, depending on what we learn about this variant, is that vaccinated or not, everybody should not only have a test, but also should have at least a week quarantine with another test at the end of that. So there's some practical implications on people getting back to their lives when they return. So uh, those things are, are fluid. And then our knowledge of the variant itself, both in terms of which countries it's found in, which countries it's prevalent in, and in terms of how significant it is for the disease it may cause and whether our vaccines and the immunity that people already have from vaccination are effective and how effective. All of those things are questions that to me uh, make it a very tricky time to travel outside of our borders. One more quick question for you, doctor. Are you gonna travel over the holidays? No, we considered it. <laughs> and uh, we before Omicron's emergence, we considered booking a trip. Um, you know, kind of March break trip, and, and we chickened out, and I'm glad we did. Okay. Good advice as always. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Take care. Dr. Samir Gupta in Toronto.